Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. In my last video I showed you some incredible drone footage of the ancient site of Somatar, located in southeastern Anatolia. Somatar was a favourite site of the late Chuck Appleton of the CF App 7865 channel and it really is a modern mystery, but that's all because of a lack of work that's been done so far. The French consul Henry Pognon visited Somatar in 1901 and 1905 and Judah Ben Segal spent a few days there in 1952. Both of them published their findings. In more recent times, Youssef al Bayrak and his team surveyed the site and in the past few years he has released a number of papers. But it only really got the world's attention for the first time in 2017 when a toy chariot dating back 5,000 years was discovered. Selel Uladag led the 2017 excavations and he said that Somatar was one of the most important sites in the region and on reading more about this site I can only agree. These 21st century excavations focused on the tombs that were dug into the surrounding hills, dotted around in a crude crescent shape around the central mound. From the little information that we have, we already know that Somatar has a long history and it was certainly prominent from the 2nd century BC to the 3rd century AD when it looks to have been a centre of worship for the Mesopotamian moon god Sin, as well as other planetary deities related to the cult centre of nearby Haran. At this time more tombs were dug, decorated caves and subterranean temples were dug into the surrounding hills and walls and turrets were built onto the mound. But this mound is not a natural hill, it's a hoyuk which is an artificial mound consisting of the accumulated remains of an ancient settlement. From reading the papers released by Al Bayrak, I knew that Somatar had a long history, but just how old is this mound? What lies beneath it? It has never been properly excavated, but there are some clues as to what may lie beneath. Somatar is important not just to history, but also to Abrahamic religions, as there is a legend that Moses himself settled here after escaping the Pharaoh of Egypt. It was apparently the place he met his father-in-law, who scripture says was another prophet. For this reason, Somatar is called the City of Prophets, and the settlement or court centre he would have found is what today is likely hidden beneath the artificial mound. Al Bayrak released a paper in 2015 titled New Suggestions Related to Somatar Court Centre, where he explains his surveys of the mound itself. He found ceramics dating back to the Chalcolithic period. He also found a certain type of cooking pot with triangular handles, and these are dated to the late Chalcolithic Early Bronze Age. More Bronze Age finds were found in every part of the mound. Although less common, shards of Iron Age ceramics from the 1st millennium BC were also discovered, as well as 20 Roman pots. We find more pottery dating to the Middle Ages and also the Islamic period. So from the 5,000 year old toy chariot with moving wheels, which was discovered in a tomb in the hills that encircle the mound, and the pottery found within the mound itself, it looks like the site was a prominent settlement from the Chalcolithic to Bronze Age, continuing on to a lesser extent thereafter. Although with the current level of knowledge we can't pin down the specific origins of the mound, there are Chalcolithic finds, and the Chalcolithic in southeastern Anatolia was 5500 to 3000 BC. The Bronze Age was from 3000 to 1200 BC, and the life of Moses is thought to be somewhere between 1500 and 1400 BC, placing him in the ancient Anatolian Bronze Age. This would have been when Somatar was under Mitanni rule. But how do we know the mound of Somatar isn't just a pile of rubble? How do we know it's hiding anything? How do we know the mound wasn't just built to be, well, a mound? Of course right now we don't, 
but similarities to Arslan Tepe, another artificial mound site in Turkey, which has been excavated, I should add, implies that similar discoveries could be made one day at Somatar. Arslan Tepe is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, a mound that's 30 metres tall in the Malatya Plain, 15 kilometres southwest of the Euphrates River. Excavations have been extensive, and finds date back to the late Chalcolithic, contemporary with early Uruk in southern Mesopotamia, between 4300 and 3900 BC. Inside the mound is a so-called palace complex, which was still occupied in the early Bronze Age. It continued to be used in the mid to late Bronze Age and Hittite periods, and the finds inside the mound have been nothing short of incredible, with buildings, walls, swords, artwork, pottery, sculptures and more. It was a powerful and iconic centre in the landscape. The age and appearance of Arslan Tepe does remind me of Somatar, and I do wonder what incredible discoveries are waiting to be found. Because the ancient burials are found in the hills surrounding the Somatar Mound, and because the mound can be seen from every burial site, often with their entrances facing it, and because this site had religious significance in later history, I would suggest that this was a religious cultic site in the Chalcolithic and Bronze Ages. Maybe a temple complex with a surrounding settlement. Maybe something like a ziggurat. Although it is too far north to be classified as a ziggurat, the religious nature of the ziggurat structure, and their ruined mound-like form when rediscovered, makes me think that Somatar Mound is something of a similar nature. The famous ziggurat of Ur in modern Iraq was built in the 21st century BC, and it was dedicated in honour of Nana Sin, the Mesopotamian moon god. With the moon god's connection to Somatar in later history, could we tentatively link the structure below the mound to ancient moon god worship as well, with origins in the late Chalcolithic and early Bronze Age? I don't know. The Bronze Age tombs that were dug into the hillsides around Somatar also form a crude crescent around the mound. And of course, the crescent has always been a moon symbol. So maybe this was by design in homage of the moon god. Again, I'm speculating. Poking through the mound itself, we can see courses of well-eroded limestone masonry. Some of the stonework does relate to the 2nd century BC, but you could argue that some of it does look older, which would not be surprising with the Chalcolithic and Bronze Age pottery. Chuck of the CF Apps channel made a video in 2018 where he believed that this mound was a ruined pyramid temple, maybe with the history stretching back to the Ice Age. Whilst I agree with the first part, that it could well be a temple and something like a ziggurat or pyramid-like structure, there is no indication right now of such an ancient date. For example, there are no archaeological finds like what we find at Gebekli Tepe or Karahan Tepe. Due to the work at Arslan Tepe, and due to other monumental building projects in the Middle East, I think we can safely assume that the bulk of the structures below this mound are late Chalcolithic to early Bronze Age in origin. But because Somatar was built inside an oasis, where many natural springs are found, I wouldn't be surprised if this site has at least a Neolithic origin. It is a prime location for early farmers to settle, maybe a place that people went to after the pre-pottery Neolithic. Gebekli Tepe and Karahan Tepe are both situated on high ground, perfect for a hunter-gatherer society, but Somatar was very much built on the lowlands, which is better for agriculture. That for me is the important difference, and may imply the origins of Somatar did come after Gebekli Tepe and Karahan Tepe, but it is worth noting that Karahan Tepe is just 7 miles to the north. Maybe if and when they dig down through the mound, they'll find evidence of continuous settlement all the way through to Neolithic times. And well, maybe even the pre-pottery Neolithic. 
Somatar is actually comparable in size to Gobekli Tepe, and with it being a site loaded with natural springs, I think what we know about Somatar today could well just be the tip of the iceberg. I hope to see more excavations in the future, because this really is an exciting place that's full of history, and it looks to be another forgotten chapter in the human story. I do have a lot more to say about Somatar, and I will be doing more videos in the near future, and I can now finally understand why Chuck loved this site so much. It really is an unexplored goldmine of history. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.